So uncertain terms by their coach Don Ferner that witness have a scoring potential which averages 27 per, uh, points per match in the last eight games. So they're aware that uh, Australia's uh, credentials are on the line. And the witness side has come out and uh, they're in white uniform with a black stripe down the shoulder and down the arms. A good crowd in attendance here too, very good. And some, uh, well, there are some of the Australian players who aren't playing tonight, some of the test players. I noticed with interest not so long ago too, <laughs> Craig Johnson, one of, uh, who must be one of the most avid uh, rugby league fans over here. The famous, uh, there he is at the back with a very curly hair sitting there very objectively looking at the game the liverpool uh, soccer player that's done so marvelously well and the referee uh, we're going to have a look at at the moment there's a gentleman by the name of mr g berry he comes from the town of jewsbury in uh, yorkshire we of course in witness are in lancashire across the uh, the pennines and uh, now we're going to have uh, a little bit of business out there in the middle with uh, the uh, captains from both sides and that's uh, Mick Burke the uh, fullback coming up there on the left he is a former international there's the toss being made by the little lad and Mr Berry is acquainting uh, one of the two captains of the fact that uh, the toss has been won or lost a few pictures before the game the press lining up there both the touch judges Mr uh, Richmond and Mr. Hesketh. Richmond will be with the pink flag. Mr. Hesketh with the orange flag. Mr. Berry, repeating, is the referee. Now we'll see. They are going to cross. Uh, so Australia will be starting the game, running from left to right. And uh, some of the lads there that you're going to be seeing, hopefully, in good action. John Bestet there, number five you saw, is one player that I mentioned earlier that uh, the uh, rumour is that uh, the English coach, Maurice Bamford's come to have a good close look at him for a wing spot. And uh, Harry Pinner, the lock forward, who's uh, a smart player. Playing at lock forward is another one that uh, is allegedly under scrutiny tonight. All right. Terry Lamb, with the assistance of uh, Benny Elias getting the ball on the mound there and a good crowd too in attendance they've come in late as this miracle of <laughs> this miracle of uh, crowds over here there were half an hour ago there were a thousand people on the ground now we've got uh, what must be very nearly a capacity ground i would estimate somewhere in the order of nine or ten thousand people anyway there they go and uh, lamb gets it down deep and it's been filled there by Myler. The, uh, and he's gone for a risky long pass right from the outset that's the fullback uh, mick burke chiming in they're locked in their quarter with a strong play there some strong defence. Up they come now with Steve O'Neill, prop forward. He's been uh, the sort of uh, linchpin of this witness pack for a long while. First penalty of the match inside the five. Nobody's arguing with that. They were up very quickly. It seemed a, a slightly tardy pass from dummy half there, and uh, some of the boys broke the gun. And there goes uh, a late replacement on the side, Barry Dowd, taking the kicks for line. It's a pretty useful kick, a gain of about uh, 24 metres there. Here they come now. Mike O'Neill. The other prop. There are two O'Neills in the side. Both props. But right, they come now. Pinner trying to weave his way through the middle. Got his arms free. Had a runner on the left. Couldn't quite slip the pass. The defence came in solidly at the last second. They ran about halfway now. Spinning it out. Myler going for the long passes right at the outset to Burke. The fullback chiming in pretty regularly. Now that was the winger, David Moran, out there to get up and play the ball. Whiting not as good as some of the grounds that we've seen is the second penalty of the match and again it's for offside two penalties in the opening uh, couple of minutes and that would be uh, a shock would they not be taking a kick at goal we had the uh, lack of discipline in the great britain side i thought after 23 minutes in the second test last week when a tap penalty was taken within kicking range and uh, i'll swear that the england captain didn't know it was on the player in question just ran up and tapped the ball and uh, one uh, play the ball later they'd lost it and Australia were on the way to scoring a try so they need strong discipline when kicks at goal are on offer in this class of football they must be taken he's sort of midway between the uh, quarter line and halfway line Australia's in 
He's probably about 25 metres in from the sideline. He's a round the corner style of kicker. Mick Burke is the man. He struck that well. Is it going to the right? It is hitting the crossbar and rebounding into the field of play. Bad luck. Fielded there by Alexander. He's made a good inroad right out to the quarter line. Weaving run there. And uh, good hard running too. And there's a penalty against the uh, witness side for inside the five. A little bit of common sense prevails there. Meninga, I would not suggest any of them argue with him. He does enjoy inflicting pain, does Mal Meninga. <laughs> As uh, Greg Alexander and Terry Lamb found out in a wrestle I had with him at the Dragon Ara Hotel about a week ago. The kick for touch has been taken, puts Australia within nine metres of the halfway line. Alexander on the lamb, coming hard and straight on the burst is Martin Bella. Can't get the arms free, looking to do it. Tackled about four metres, five metres short of the halfway line. Elias at dummy half. Alexander out to lamb. Lamb steps, makes a little inroad up the middle there. Defence up very quickly at this stage. He pulled off the mark, but told to get up and play it. Out to Elias, then to Alexander. Long cutout pass from Langmack to Belcher. Belcher got it to Mortimer. Mortimer's going up the side. Strong uh, run by him. He takes it over the halfway line. Good, equally good defence there from uh, the number 12 coming across was uh, Paul Hume. Again, the Australian pool is starting to power through the ruck and get beyond that advantage line. Elias at dummy half. Away she goes. The kicking tactics. Lamb has found a wide open space. Burks seems to be looking for the winger to get to it. Moran does uh, eventually get to it. He's going to be pinged off inside his quarter. And now we'll see what their options are, whether they'll use it a couple of times and then kick or kick early in the tackle count. Work it up the blind side on that occasion. No blind side to work at the moment. Still no score in the match. We've had uh, around about four and a half minutes of play. Back it goes to Burke. Burke with a quick one step there. Didn't have time to wind up and kick it. But he's kicked it down the throat of uh, Belcher, who brings it up nicely after receiving on the first bounce. He's brought to ground by Myler, who gets a rousing cheer for the effective sort of Cumberland throw that he laid on. Alexander up the blind side. Liz Kiss was the man there, the uh, wing three-quarter, who's back after injury. Martin Bella did well to pick that one up. It was low and down around his knees. Try to use that blind side. Vinny Elias hasn't had a run from dummy half yet. He might do. There he goes. Right up the guts now. Right up the middle. Could be a try if he can get a pass away. Got it out there to Shearer. Shearer's trying to go round his bank. It's a long one-handed pass into Surinan. Surinan's using the He-Man stuff there and battling his way about seven or eight metres despite being held by three witness players. Tough stuff from Surinan. Lovely run there from Benny Elias. Elias now swings it out to Alexander on a lamb. There's a little grubber kick through. The Jack Gibson ploy could be a try. It is a try to Mal Meninga, and he's been ruled offside. Been ruled offside. Difficult to pick those up. The referee obviously in a better position than us here, uh, 70 or 80 metres away from the sideline. It was a very nicely judged quick. We'll see whether we can pick up Meninga. Uh, Meninga apparently to me was onside there, but uh, I'm not going to argue with the referee. Well, kick there from uh, Lamb. Beautiful end over end kick, a tactic devised initially by Jack Gibson. That sort of long across the field grubber kick. Witness now. Yes, and of course, my old freezing buddy. A, <laughs> a man, I think he's going to go into the popsicle business after this tour, or the ice block business. Graham Hughes, comment. Keep talking to me, Rex. You're going to keep me warm tonight. <laughs> Look, I'm going to disagree with the referee. There was no way that Meninga was offside. The Australians were stunned after that decision. And, uh, well, it, it's a great start for this Widness side. And, well, that's a bonus for them. If there is one thing that's going well for Widness, more than even Great Britain in the first two test matches, when they are in possession of the ball, you can understand a pattern of play. They've been working the ball one and two in, looking for the blind. Meninga, one-handed pass away to Lamb. Out there nicely to Chris Mortimer. Keeps his hands high through the pass. It's away to Meninga. He's up towards the quarter. He could go very close to scoring. He's beaten two of them. But the last tackle coming across there, and that was from John Bastet, knocked the ball out of his hands and over the sideline. Very strong stuff there by Mel Meninga, and uh, good play by Australia to keep the ball alive in that situation. OK, this scrum a critical one now for the witness side. They're only about 8 metres, 10 metres perhaps out from their line. And fed by David Hume. And away he comes up the blind side. No room there. They've got him fairly close to the sideline. Still no score in the match. Uh, witness have had the misfortune of uh, Burke 
having a penalty shot at goal from about 38 metres out. And it hit the, actually hit the middle of the crossbar. There's a, a kick that's way out. I think he's had a bit of a brain explosion with that one. That was nearly into the crowd. So that brings them back and puts them under pressure now. Ill-directed kick way over the sideline. No real need to kick for, uh, for the sideline. They just need to belt it downfield in those situations. Australia come up with a scrum win, do they? It's no, it's one against the feed. That's the first one lost against the feed. And uh, it was Burke who came up with the ball, the fullback. There's a little bit of an opening there developed in the middle, which uh, Wright nearly ran through. But uh, the defence was there. They're moving it up the blind side now. Strong defence there on Steve O'Neill. Good tackling coming in from uh, Stephen Folks. And another penalty. The penalty count at this stage is uh, moving along to 4-1. We've had uh, around about nine minutes of play. No score. Mr Berry from Dewsbury is uh, continuing the uh, problems that Australian sides, kangaroo sides, on this tour are having with referees. Now, tap restart. There's Bastard coming around, and he's hit and met hard there by uh, Martin Bella. Bella is a huge man. Here he is with another tackle, uh, this time on uh, Mike O'Neill. Phil McKenzie, the young Australian hooker. Up the blind side they come, got some nice moves. Myler runs into trouble there in the shape of uh, Stephen Folks with one of his crunching head-on chest-high tackles. This should loosen your teeth. Pumping it out along the open side of the line now. There's a good uh, sidestepping bit of work there by Harry Pinner. Showed a bit of class. And goodness do make an inroad up the blind side. Surinam was the final tackler on uh, David Hume. Myler. McKenzie. Pinner pops a pass nicely. It's gone there to number 12, uh, Paul Hume. And uh, they finally brought the ground and lose the ball just inside the Australian quarter. A promising move. Players backing up the ball carrier looking quite good. No score in the match. About ten and a half minutes gone. Australia have had a try disallowed. And here comes Les Davidson up the middle of the ruck with a pounding sort of a run. And here lies living in that dummy half position. Surinan, strong stuff. And he takes a power of pulling down this gigantic young player. I know some of the Australian uh, officials would just like to see him a little bit more involved. Now there's going to be a penalty for a push in the chest and an acting performance that would have won the uh, uh, witness player, uh, David Hume, an acting uh, award on any occasion that he was put up for. Should have been slapped on a 402 for overacting. Well, he's always got a job in equity, uh, in uh, repertory after that. A bit of a shove in the chest, and he went down as though he'd been poleaxed by Joe Bugner. So that gives the uh, Great Britain side, the Great Britain, this is not Great Britain, this is witness. <laughs> this gives the witness side the opportunity now through Burke again to raise the flags. And on the evidence of his first kick, which was terribly unlucky, hit right on the black dot and rebounded back in the field of play. This one's seven metres out from the Australian quarter line, about uh, 15 metres in from the sideline. Fairly windless conditions. Freezing, but windless conditions. Burke, very thick set lad, stocky body. Could be construed to be a prop forward or a, somebody in the pack. His kick looks pretty good to me. And there's the first points to witness. So after about... Uh, 12 minutes of play, we've got a scoreline that leads witness to Australian Hill. And from the kickoff again, uh, Australia drive it deep. It's taken by Myler. Myler going to go for the kick and chase. It's not a bad one. If he gets the bounce, and the bounce was very unlucky for him, but beautiful for Alexander. Picked it up nicely. Bit of bad luck there for uh, Myler. He had uh, everything on there on that occasion. Out to Lamb there to uh, Belcher, the fullback, chiming in. Can't get a pass away. And now Elias working the ruck and throws the dummy again. Gets a pass away, one-handed out to Terry Lamb. Lamb accelerates, goes up the middle. Gets to the quarter line before being put away. One of the uh, witness players being pulled off the ruck. That's got to be a penalty to Australia for infringement of the play the ball there. Uh, David Hume there was uh, uh, interfering with the uh, player trying to clear the ball away. 
And now we've got uh, Graham Hughes has got uh, Noel Cleal down on the sideline. I wonder how the big crush is feeling about it all. No, of course, uh, a few regrets tonight. This is your old club witness you played for last year. Yeah, mate, I wouldn't mind it playing. Um, obviously, if Les had been playing, it would have been better still, but unfortunately, we're, we're both not, you know, not out there. Who, the, uh, who are the players that we should be looking for in this witness side to cause a bit of trouble? Yeah, obviously, uh, Tony Miley hasn't showed much in the tests yet, but he apparently is, he is injured. Uh, he's a good player. Uh, Harry Pinner, the lock forward, he, he's a good player. Um, uh, actually, the whole side, you know, they're not a big side. And there's not many other big names out there, but they're, they're you know, a pretty competent side. As usual, the penalties are against Australia early on. Mate, uh, if, you know, if they had the $1,000 fine on O'Ree, you'd, you'd do some day because they're pretty incompetent, aren't they? <laughs> All right, thanks, Noel. Terry Lamb now, as we listen to the dulcet tones of Noel Cleal there, the big crusher. Now, Lamb from just outside the quarter, directly in front, strikes the ball well. It is a goal. And so the score after about 14 and a half minutes play is Australia 2, Witness 2. That was the restart play. He came in as a replacement. He gets the kick for possession. Les Davidson couldn't see it at all, but they've come up with possession of Witness. I don't know what Davidson was doing there. Shielding his eyes from the light. He should have made some sort of attempt at it. But this way, Witness come up with the ball. Pinner got a pass away. It's been intercepted by Elias. Pinner is a player always looking to get the ball away. He's a man that can make uh, an outside support look very good. Stephen Folk, strong, 10-metre bust Stop up towards it. the halfway line. There's Lang make a dummy half. Away they go to uh, Bella. He's playing strongly on the edge of the ruck. He uh, likes to run about seven or eight metres off the uh, edge of the ruck. Now to Lamb, a long floating pass, and Mortimer couldn't handle that, and up they've come with possession. It wasn't a great pass from Lamb, but Barry Dowd's come up with a possession for the witness side. They're around about halfway. And uh, well, they go on the open side, but uh, not much support there for O'Neill as he came flying through and tried to uh, get through the tackle of folks. No way there. Now they spin it out. Along the line, they go out to Myler. Myler to Burke. Burke gets a pass away to number three there, right, Darren Wright. He got the grubber kick in. It's going to be picked up there by Burke. Burke gets a pass away to a support. That's out to Moran, the winger. And he didn't appear to be ready for that. And... Uh, as a result, he was very quickly put down. Australian player down at the moment, Graham Hughes. Looks to me to be Steve Folks. No, Steve Folks is still out here wide. He's, he's, he's lying away from us, Rex, and I can't well, see his number. Just keep your eye on him. I can't pick him up from here either. It's, uh, anyway, it's the witness side now going for the kick downfield. Looks like it could be a good one. It is a magnificent low trajectory grubber kick. Les Kiss, is it? The, uh, the man that's injured. And uh, the way he's lying looked a bit uh, fraught with me because he's had shoulder trouble. Anyway, we shall see. But that was a grand kick put in by Witness. Grand kick put on by Witness. Uh, they've taken play to within 10 metres of the Australian line. Alexander comes up with a, uh, a win, though, through the efforts of uh, his hooker, Benny Elias. Now, Shearer running from dummy half. It's just a bit soft, the defence there. He made a very easy eight or nine metres there. Winger shouldn't be allowed that sort of latitude. Davidson on the burst. Straight and hard over the quarter. There's Kiss up and limping. And out it comes to Belcher. Belcher's gone for the kick down. Feel it's gone very high. It's going to be attempted to be taken by Bastard. Oh, he didn't uh, go for it at all. He just let it bounce in front of him. Burke's made a meal of it. The ball's lying free and loose. Picked up by Bastard now. And it's going to be a knock on, really. I don't think that uh, Bassnett's going to do his uh, England chances any good with uh, not going for a ball that's kicked to him like that. He just sort of pulled his hands away. And there's a scrum penalty against the uh, witness side. And it's a differential penalty, of course. Two all the score. About uh, 16 and a half, 17 minutes play gone. You wouldn't want to know who my st statistician is tonight. One of the oldest journalists in the Southern Hemisphere, Alan Clarkson. And really, I've had to sharpen him up on his mathematics. It's a little bit funny. Anyway, uh, he's a nice man. And he needs the money. <laughs> OK, Australia up towards the witness quarter line. Re recollect that score two all at this stage. Here's the blindside move coming up. And it's a penalty being awarded against the uh, witness three-quarter right, who was way up, according to the referee, offside. I'm inclined to be totally in agreement with him there. He looked about four or five yards in front of his teammates. And that was uh, a little bit uh, dumb because uh, this is a, a kick that Terry Lamb would normally throw over. 
It's only about 12 metres out and about, what, five metres off centre? Matter of fact, you could bet odds on this ball going right out of the ground, I would think. And what's the story with Les Kiss? Uh, Graham, was uh, was it a shoulder or did he was limping? No, when they put that uh, kick through on that far touch line, he copped a kick himself to the uh, to the left knee. Just a bit of bruising. I've just been noticing now uh, spinning up and down the far touch line trying to loosen and stretch right out there. They're keeping their eye on him, but he should be fine. That's good news. Now, Terry Lamb from that uh, very simple kick I've described. He's going to attempt to make it forward to Australia. And then he comes. Short run. It varies his technique, and there she goes. And it just failed to go right out of the ground, hit the uh, top of the grandstand and came back down. So, after 19 minutes of play, Australia 4, witness 2. OK, let's see who they go now. It's right getting the kick off. It wasn't a bad one. Now, let's see. Belcher takes it, stands his ground well, and then does uh, the clever thing and falls down, so to avoid the tackler coming over the top. Not a Stephen Fox, the pocket dynamo, who's uh, only short and not all that heavy, but enormously powerful. Puts to his feet, Elias. Out they go to Alexander Surinan with a high knee action there, punches his way through, releases his hands onto Elias, switches the play back to uh, Alexander. Alexander gets it out there to Mal Meninga. He's running, gets it away to Les Kiss. Kiss goes through a little uh, bit of ineffective tackling there, but finally put down by the support coming across in the shape of Barry Dow. Now they're over the halfway line. On to Bella. He elects to throw the dummy. Oh, he's got a beautiful pass away to Davidson. Davidson got a bad pass away. Not, not on. That's not good football by Davidson. He knew that uh, he was half down. He should not have gone for the attempt there. He should have died with that ball. They probably would have scored from the ensuing play the ball. But you can't put old heads on young shoulders. Now scrum going down with a feed to the witness side. Over here and feeds it. Good strong push on, but nonetheless, Burke standing up as a 5 -8. Bit of shepherding there. God, spare me days. Well, you'd swear he was out on the sheep on the sheep country there, as so much of a shepherd it was. Now, Myler standing in the ruck. I wish uh, Mr. Berry had watched those sorts of things. That was a pretty horrendous uh, bit of work, that one. Pretty horrendous. Witness still just outside their quarter. They've shown a little bit more flair now. They're going to be penalised. So instead of receiving a, a penalty for a, a, an atrocious shepherd, they've been penalised themselves for uh, failure to get back the required distance. The penalty count at the moment is six to four in uh, witness favour. Now Burke, the rather husky figure of Burke, comes up to take the kick. He's got a decent sort of a boot on him. Lumps that over into the crowd. Well and truly over the sideline. A gain of about 18 metres. And here they come, moving it out wide. There's O'Neill coming through. Steve O'Neill. An old-fashioned type of a prop. Out they come. Along the three-quarter line now. Oh, and a strong shoulder attempted charge by Meninga, but it didn't uh, miscue a little bit. And uh, through came Air. Pinner trying to stand on the tackle and offload, but uh, he gets uh, strongly put down. Midway between the halfway and the Australian quarter. And they go to David Hume. His kick is charged down. The regather. It shouldn't be six to go. There's another an awful pass. Got to Meninga out there to kiss. And kiss trips and falls as he comes to the defence. But Australia in possession. Now that should be a penalty for stealing the ball. And Kiss is in trouble again. He's down. Not got to his feet since the tackle. It will be a penalty. And they're calling for a stretcher. So let's have a look at the replay on that, if we can, to pick up exactly what the problem was. Now here he goes, uh, there's the pass given by Davidson out there, and out she goes to Les Kiss. He props, comes back, and it looks to me as though he's pulled a hammy. It looks to me as though he's gone in the hocks. Well, there goes the Australian doctor having a bit of a sprint out there at the moment. And the pass was given to him, incidentally, by Paul Langmack, not... Uh, Davidson, but uh, there was nothing wrong with the pass. He accepted that, ran on about four or five metres, appeared to be trying to step. And uh, either a knee's gone or he's done a hamstring because... Hey, wait a minute. So, well, it could be something to do with the knee that he injured about five minutes ago. There was a, an element of concern by some of the Australian players. There, He's holding the back of his left knee with his hand or it could be the lower hamstring. 
So it's not a bad sort of a replacement to bring on, is it? <laughs> we see Brett Kenny coming out there. And uh, this man is in uh, superb form. His defence in the second test was just uh, spot on. I've travelled... All right, we're back to the action. The kick has been taken. Australia up on the, the witness quarter line. We've had about 20, what, uh, 27 minutes of play. Now, let's see what they can do with this lot. They've got them about 18 metres out from the uh, quarter line. Benny Elias is at dummy half. Lang Max switching the play across the ruck. Gets it away to Surin, tearing his way. That's the goal line. You can see only a few metres away in front there. Lang Mack, the dummy half, pops it out to Terry Lamb. Lamb goes for a long floating pass out to Meninga. Meninga straightens it up. Can't stand on the tackle and offload. He does now. Gets it away to Benny. Elias. Elias has evaded two, three. Gets a pass away beautifully to Alexander, who runs in a big circle. Comes back, falls. He's going to... Uh, I thought he even lost that ball at the end of that tackle there, but the referee was unsighted on that. Away to Benny Elias. Elias turns it back inside, and it's gone away across the ruck to Surin. And Surin stands in a tackle. Gets it there. It was knocked down by Alexander, but knocked... Well, there was no knock on it. The ball went backwards. An astonishing decision. The ball went backwards. He wasn't, uh, wasn't uh, propelled towards the opponent's goal line. Uh, we've got a touch judge in at the moment, reporting something or other. Your guess is as good as mine. OK, Graham, I think you've got some news on Les Kiss. The latest is? The latest is that it was that left knee that he damaged earlier on. He spoke to Larry Britton, the trainer, when he went out, and that's why the immediate call for the stretcher was. He felt something go. Uh, definite ligament trouble uh, to his left knee. Oh, well, that's a great misfortune. If he's got ligament trouble, he's probably out for a fairly lengthy period. Well, the referee has overruled or not concerned himself with whatever the decision was by the touch judge. Witness have come up with the ball. And there's a strong bit of defence by Terry Lamb there. An actual loss of ground there from uh, Hume. Coming up the blind side. But look at that defence coming in from Stephen Folks. Belting in hard around the Chester region. Langmack there too. Hume away to O'Neill. He's put down. That's Steve O'Neill, one of two in the team. 4-2, Australia lead. And a penalty fairly predictably against Australia. And that penalty count has moved on to 7-5 in uh, goodness favour. All right, the kick of touch has been taken. Bassnett runs it from the tap. And McKenzie, who's done pretty well at dummy half, I think. And there's a switch of play across the ruck to uh, Pinner. You get a long one out there. There's no room on the sideline because uh, there was plenty of defence coming across from Dale Shearer. There's Davidson fell over on his own there and he's haste to turn and get back. Moving it out. Him. Bell on the ground. Picked up beautifully by Elias. Elias gets it away to Lamb. Lamb's on the boil. Gets a pass away. It's gone to ground. It's come up to the witness side. And again, Terry Lamb panicking at the last moment, trying desperately to get a pass away when there was no necessity to do it. So they're really creating problems with uh, some bad passing at different times. To witnesses' credit, they've kept on spinning the ball around. They're making it an attractive game to watch. Plenty of ball movement. They are having a little bit of trouble getting beyond the Australian defence. There's a mile of kick. Goes to Belcher. Takes it his own side of halfway. He evades. No, he doesn't. He gets a pass away, though, to Brett Kenny. And Kenny comes up. And uh, dummies to go to Lamb. Makes a beautiful break. And then is picked off in the defence there by, uh, I think that was uh, number four, Dowd, Barry Dowd. Still punching away up the uh, middle of the ruck, the Australian forwards. Elias doing a lot of talking. The Australian captain. Mortimer to his feet and played it. Then there's Bella. Bella going right through the middle of the ruck and stumbles just as he was setting himself to offload. Benny Elias. Dummy half. There's a switch across the ruck to Surinan. Could be a try coming up here. Surinan gets a bad pass away again. It's gone uh, along the ground and it's had to be picked up there, but it was done well. There's the ball stolen. The referee's not going to rule on that. Jeez, <laughs> I think they've got this bloke from the Deaf Dumb and Blind Institute, really. Some of the things you've seen. That ball was dead set stolen from an Australian player on that tackle. That was a shocky bit of refereeing. Now they're trying to work the play out from their quarter. This witness side don't need any help from the referee. They've done a pretty good job on their own. They're not a bad football team, let me tell you. 
They're putting up a far better performance than some of the other sides that we've seen go around. Belcher. Oh, Kenny trips. Here's something on for Great Britain now. The pass has gone out to Moran. David Moran, he's going to be run down by Alexander, though. Great pace shown by the Australian halfback. Misfortune there for Australia because the ball ricocheted and Kenny fell over. But then it came to Moran. He was picked off. Now they're spinning it out wide. It's gone out to the outside backs, and there's air. Comes up with a... Uh, it's not air. It's um, Paul Hume. And he's hit very, very hard in defence there by Chris Mortimer. Witness side doing it nicely with uh, Pinner trying to offload again. And the crowd will scream for that. It was not a punch. It was an attempt to get the ball from his grasp. McKenzie runs from dummy half. Out to Myler. Myler cut out pass. Beautifully pulled in by Burke. Burke gets a pass by on the outside. But uh, the support was there. The defence was there. That was John Bastard. Uh, not, I'm sorry, it was Moran, the right winger, appearing at the end of that pass. They've shown a lot of flair, witness. The players prepared to... Oh, an awful pass. Beautifully picked up by Myler. There's a little kick through. It's going to be a race for Belcher. Belcher half volleys it. Breaks into the clear. He's got pace, this man. They shouldn't let him run. Offloads nicely to Lamb. And Lamb puts it down. Well, Terry Lamb, in the space of seven minutes, has bombed a try by passing at the wrong moment. And uh, he's just put out a pass which I thought was eminently catchable. He likes to back up. He's a great support player, but uh, not having a vintage game in the opening stanza of this match. 4-2 Australia lead. Another scrum win to the witness side. The scrums we've had uh, have been won to the extent of 5-1 uh, in favour of witness, and there's been one to witness against the feed. So that allied to a 7-5 penalty count. And now we're going to touch judge in. Make it uh, look a pretty ordinary performance uh, by Australia at this stage. Now well, we'll see the reason for this penalty coming up. Pinnock turns the ball away. Out it goes to the support. In comes Langmack with a swinging left arm. No uh, worries about that. Uh, correct decision. Let's hope they're consistently done throughout. Now, Burke from 10 metres outside the Australian quarter, and I would estimate about 10 metres in from the sideline. He's going to try to make it four all at half time. Or well, coming up towards half time, anyway. What have we got? About 30 minutes gone now. All right. Okay, Burke from the dimensions I've described is going to have a. A look at this. He strikes it well. It's coming down on the left-hand side. Feel by Shearer. Shearer's on the move. He's running way across field. Looks for support. Couldn't get the pass away at the end product. Still inside the quarter. Surinan getting through some powerful stuff in the Australian forwards. Elias living in that dummy half position. Away to Martin Bella who is equally playing strongly at the Australian side. Defence up very quickly. Folks, no room to move. That was not a five-yard ruck. Benny Elias throws the dummy and goes from there. Gets an inroad, get a good inroad there too, and he gets it onto Folks. Folks looking for support, and they're up to halfway. A couple of very effective runs by Benny Elias. Folks now to Elias, out to Lamb. Lamb's gone for the kick downfield. Belcher's going to be called offside if he, if he gets to the ball. Marla feels it and gets it behind his leg and he's tackled by Alexander and now there's going to be a penalty awarded against uh... well the referee spoke to Belcher on the way through there it was a marginal offside if it was touch judge in at the moment to report another incident perhaps no, he's pointing to a witness player Yes, Graham, your view? Both Tusk judges picked up uh, number 12 for witness, Paul Hume. Lamb was hit very, very late and high after he got his kick in. He's turned it around. All right, he's turned the decision around, so uh, that's uh, something that's not in the rule book in Australia, but there it is. Well, evidently, I was following the play. Lamb has been hit in back play after uh, the kick. And uh, this is going to give him a very simple kick from only about uh, 15 metres out and perhaps about the same distance off centre. Good crowd here at Witness, enjoying 
uh, a game that's had plenty of ball movement. 4-2 the score at present as Lamb lines this one up. He's kicked two from two. Yes, you might hear the rat tat 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 of a typewriter going in the background of this broadcast. I am sitting in the uh, position occupied by the press of both nations. And I would suggest there's something in the order of about 15 of them sitting along here. All writing their stories for tomorrow. Billy Lamb moving in. Strikes that. It's no goal. It's hooked away. And that is a great let off for the uh, witness side. And a bit of a blot on Terry Lamb's escutcheon. To play. Australia retain that lead four to two. The drop off, the drop out from the quarter to Belcher. Belcher finds Shearer on the run around. Shearer now got himself going straight. And he's whacked on the pace and he's come up very strongly and runs straight into uh, the uh, support player there that was trying to tackle him head on. Australia work play up towards the halfway line. They've got two sides of the ruck to work now. Elias swivels, gets it away to Bella. Well, it's hit hard. Richard Ayres, uh, Richard Ayres there, the tackler. Out they go again. Lamb goes for the kick straight downfield. Found the wide open spaces. Burke is not there at home. Alexander's going to try to get there. And he just scurries it over the dead ball line. A good plan move there by Lamb and Alexander. Occupying very, very fast uh, uh, with the uh, occasion of Alexander's very fast sprint there. Put Burke under enormous pressure because he was up in the three-quarter line. And left a wide open space at the back. The drop kick. Oh dear. <laughs> Not an easy one for Alexander to try to feel it fell in front of him. It's been fielded by Belcher. 4 2 the score. Belcher up towards the uh, quarter line. Elias on the blind side to Serenin. Serenin tearing his way through, but they've got to sustain the pressure without giving silly passes at the end of it. Elias turns it away to Folks. Folks on the tear. He's going close. It's on to, I think that's uh, Martin Bellard. He's pulled down only about three metres out. Vinny Elias might well go himself here. No, he doesn't. Gets it to Alexander. Alexander weaving and dumbing. Gets it away there to Folks. Folks has gone for a grubber kick, which has been kicked ahead again by Lamb and over the dead ball line. I don't know why Folks uh, tried to kick there. It wasn't the sixth tackle as far as I'm aware. There was just uh, a lack of sustained pressure. I'm sure his coach will talk to him about that one. There was no necessity. All he needed to do was to take the tackle and get up again. From the tap restart, away comes Stephen O'Neill. He's played strongly in the witness pack. Australia defence moving up a bit quick out there. Mal Meninga could have been pinged for offside there. Referee Mr Berry overlooks that. Witness about uh, 15 metres outside there. The quarter now. They trail four to two. Tough running and tough defence by folks. Gee, for a, for a moderate size forward, he's enormously powerful. He stood in front there and just uh, didn't move an inch. Down the field goes the kick from Barry Dowd. It's going to be fielded nicely by Brett Kenny, who came on as a replacement for the injured Les Kiss. The tackle from Darren Wright puts him down 10 metres from the halfway line. And Meninga running from dummy half under Belcher. He slips and falls just at the critical moment. Benny Elias, Liz Davidson, hurling himself at the uh, defence, literally hurling himself at it. So yes, I'd say you're pretty right, Alan. Cap, my director, saying this is as good a game as we've seen. That pass was forward to Meninga, to Terry Lamb. That one was forward too, so it's just as well that he pulled back the second because there was one at the start of that that, uh, in my view, was, uh, was not a, uh, an equitable pass. We'll have a look at that on the replay. There was the pass from, uh, this is where I'm only seeing the second pass here. The, the one that went to Meninga first was also, in my view, forward. The referee saw only one of them, but that was enough. And that's a good relieving kick taking play from inside their quarter to back to within eight metres of the halfway line. Mackenzie pumps the ball out there to O'Neill. That's a shocking pass gone there to uh, the support number 11, which he airs. And up the blind side they go, throwing dummies. Pinner there. Smart player. To his feet and plays at McKenzie. There's Myler. Burke. Out there to right. Right got it away to Moran. Moran, the winger, has a uh, pass given to him. It's a touch forward. 
I think he was uh, caught in a little bit of a Christmas hole there. Didn't bring a smile to his face. Yeah, coming up to the last couple of minutes to half time, and this is as a closer performance as we've seen on this tour. And there's a uh, feed that's been ruled crooked by Mr. Berry, and it'll be a differential penalty to the witness side on their own quarter. I'm sure that the Australian coach, Don Ferner, will be highlighting three or four passes that were given uh, when tries were on that were uh, badly executed. And two of coaches, I don't think passes should have been offered. Folks was one and Lamb was another. They've had a try disallowed, which will be a fairly controversial one. That's a win against the feed to Australia. No, it's gone as a, a differential penalty. Failure of the uh, halfback, David Hume, to retire there was the reason. So the scrum penalty going to Australia. We must be uh, very close now as uh, Meninga gets a kick that's gone right over the top of the grandstand with the ball boy a long run. He'll have to go out in the street to get that one. Bella pumping it up through the middle of the ruck. Very strong run. That's got me on the advantage line by about seven metres. Now, where's uh, Lois Davidson? They take it in rotation. Davo goes strong and hard. Not quite as much. Now, there should be a Surinan or uh, uh, Bella again looking for it. There's Bella looking for work. He's not shirked it tonight. He just needs to sharpen up on that ball ability of his. And he'll be a damn good forward. There's Surinan tearing his way through on a switch play across the ruck. They've got a whole heap of uh, moves they work. Elias, Alexander, switches it back on the inside. It's going to Alexander again. He's thrown the dummy. He's going to kick ahead and he's going to score the try. The referee has awarded it. Sharp work from Alexander. Very smart. Very, very fast player. A player that really hasn't put a foot wrong on uh, any match that he's played this year. Let's see it again. This is from out on the quarter line. As Benny Elias gets it away to Alexander, he dummies. Got right through the gap there. He's just too much pace for the players in contention. Burke tried to uh, knock down the kick attempt of his. He gets a hand to it. And that is a totally legitimate and very good try by the sharp young halfback. So the score now has moved on to uh, eight points to two with a kick at goal to, uh, to follow. Now there's the long, strong arm of the law, you can see. Looking intently at the game. But Terry Lamb, meanwhile, that's the quarter line. He's taken it back. Four metres from that, about four metres into the sideline. Strikes the ball and up she goes, and away she goes to the right, just a fraction. So it's eight points to two in Australia's favour, with time nearly up. There it is in the background. So the scoreline now, 8-2 at half time, as close a contest as we've had in this uh, match so far. The penalties are in favour of the witness side by 10 to 7. The scrums have gone 5 to 1 to the witness side, which was a hell of a shock. And the one scrum against the feet also went to the witness side. The try scorer was the sole try scorer was Greg Alexander. Terry Lamb has come up with two conversions for the witness side. Burke has got the one penalty goal. He had the misfortune to hit the post with another one. So the halftime scorers, we take a break, is 8 2 Australia. Don't go away. We'll be right back with the action of the second half. And back they come after second half. Uh, or after half time, and uh, I'll be bound that uh, Don Furness had a few things to say about pushing passes at stupid times because they really have uh, butchered a few golden opportunities when they had uh, tackle count to play with and, uh, and got within, uh, you know, close proximity of the line and uh, have squandered possession with silly passes at critical moments. So I think that will probably be one of the emphasis uh, that Don Furness made. Graham, here's any changes on either side. <laughs> No changes to either side and no further news other than uh, what we mentioned in the first half about Les Kisafir from the Australian camp that he really has sustained some serious knee ligament trouble to his left knee. OK, we've got a scoreline that reads Australia 8, witness 2. The kickoff has taken place. Australia running from right to left. Nobody needs to be told. They're in the green and gold. And now you see Surinan running through the middle of the ruck and making a good strong inroad. He's done that pretty well tonight. If we can just get some of these younger Australian forwards, the Surinans, the, uh, the uh, Davidsons, uh, the Martin Bellas, just getting them offloading a little bit more often. 
It'll be a very good second pack. Benny Elias having to take the option to a, a pass to Mal Meninga. He's gone for a very high bomb. It's gone way over the head of Burke. It's rolling back. It'll probably go into the in goal area. It won't go dead. He's going to have to run it out of there. He tries to bring it out. He's effectively taken down there by Paul Langmack, one of the uh, very good chasers in this Australian tour. He's always there to chase the kick down. Now, witness pinned in their own quarter. Let's see whether they can get themselves out of here. There's Harry Pinner trying to weave his way through the ruck. He's about five metres from the quarter line. Oh, there's a ball being put out. It's uh, still on the ground. It's still on the ground, and it's going to be a knock-on. I think the referee should have played the advantage there and uh, waited until such time as the ball was finally held by a witness player because uh, that ball was still bobbling around. Anything could have happened. That should be a penalty to Australia. It is differential. The witness player on the open side of that scrum swung there and kicked the ball back into the scrum when it came out the Australian side. Mal Meninga kicking for, for touch. Well, he kicks sideways. He didn't try to create too much in the way of uh, gain. Much better your last now. They've got a multiple number of moves they put on. And Ferner will be very, uh, I think, displeased if they squander possession here without using up the six. There's the initial charge, and Bella really came out of that very, uh, very, very strongly. Uh, Australians, uh, well, there's the ball over the sideline. <laughs> really, <laughs> I think Don Ferner will be uh, pulling his hair at uh, some of the uh, things that are happening. Penalty there gone to the uh, witness side for a push for a player that wasn't in possession of the ball. And they're really making it hard for themselves. Now, let's not be any further critical about the Australian side. Let's give a little bit of credit to this witness team who are doing remarkably well. tap restart after the kick they're moving it out uh, wide that's gone to uh, number 10 there who's uh, Mike O'Neill he's to the tackle and got the pass away while they're trying to uh, weave and come through he's done a nice run there he's caught by the jersey from behind with Sheridan put to ground Elias over the top Mackenzie out to Burke and there's uh, strong defense coming in too as the number five there uh, John Bassnett was Put down tough. They haven't made much ground out of their own quarter here. And back they go now with the uh, the ball rolling free, being kicked through. It's still uh, on the ground. The referee ruling that uh, it's six to go. Touched by an Australian player in that melee. They're still in their quarter. Witness. Switch up the ruck. Caught by one leg. Mike O'Neill very nearly hopped his way into the clear. Just on the quarter line. Out along the line to Myler. Myler there to... Number 12, Paul Hume, who's standing very wide. But back they go again with an error. And six to go again. Australian tackling very, very ferociously. Number eight, Steve O'Neill coming up with a little bit of a stepping run up the inside of the ruck there. A bit of a punch throw with uh, Langmack. And uh, I think O'Neill had a little bit of an altercation there, but it's all over and done with now. Mackenzie, the uh, young Australian. Oh, very close to an intercept there. There was Mal Meninga on the boil. And again, the Australian defence really tight as a drum here in the uh, opening part of this uh, second half. There's a little dummy to kick, and he can't get a pass away. That uh, is the last, uh, second last tackle coming up. Last one now. On the blind side they go. A little kick over the top by Pinner. Pinner can't handle it. Can't get to it. Alexander's picked it up and brought it back. Now, can Australia retain possession? That's the critical factor. Langman gets it away to Fox. Fox weaving, going crossfield. And he's just set himself to run straight. And he Elias, the dummy heart, wasn't watching the ball there. Bella pumping it up strong. Gets into the quarter. He's uh, made no errors tonight, Bella. And very ferocious. Alexander out to Terry Lamb. To Lamb gets it back on the inside to Langmack. Langmack there to Elias. Elias ducks his weaves. He's caught by the collar. Swung to the ground. Just inside the witness quarter. Belcher's up there. That's the fullback. Lamb goes for the kick down. It might be too far. Much too far, in effect. It's gone way over the dead ball line. So judgment lacking in that kick. Australia eight. Witness two. 
restart there and get that strong defence from Stephen Folks, not the uh, Mike O'Neill backwards in that tackle. If there's a single difference between most of these sides, it's the ferocity of the defence. That should be a penalty to Australia. The ball was picked up in an offside position, but uh, the referee has ruled the knock on first. It uh, shouldn't have cut any ice. The rule is a fairly fundamental there. The scrum going down on the uh, witness quarter. Alexander to feed it for Australia. Scrum is presently uh, five to one in favour of the witness side. And the penalties have now moved as a result of that differential penalty up to 13 to eight in favour. The witness with the overall scoreline is eight to Australia's way. Wow. Dummies, Weaves runs into trouble, tries to get a pass away, does get a pass away. On the inside to Darren Wright. Wright picked off on the halfway line by Mal Meninga. And it needed to be picked off too. There's been a bit of an altercation at the back. It's Langmack again. There's a bad pass going to ground behind the uh, player and a knock-off. And I think that was uh, Paul Hume who uh, put it down. Careless pass there. Right between his legs. Scrum going down just on the halfway line up to Cherry Lamb. He throws the dummy and accelerates. Can't get the pass away. There was good defence. Burke coming over the top seemed to put a little right hand into him, but uh, Meninga not worried about that. He runs straight into them from dummy half. Now the crowd really getting a roar going. There's a little bit of ferocity coming into the witness defence. Elias, dummy half. Gets it away to Chris Mortimer. He's a straight and hard. Getting beyond the advantage line. Elias again. Bella throws the dummy, looks for support, got a pass away nicely. It's out there to Belcher, but Belcher's pass straight over the sideline and behind Dale Shearer. And again, the Australians bring themselves undone with some uncharacteristically sloppy passing. The scrum now with a witness feed inside their quarter. Hume tries to run from there. He's wrapped up straight away by Alexander. Making the job very hard for themselves. If witnesses come up with a try, this Australian side, and get their tails in the air, this Australian side could be in trouble. Steve O'Neill. Yes, of course, the uh, National Panasonic points will be awarded in this match, as indeed they are all, all of the English matches of uh, English section of the matches in this tour. Uh, the points will be awarded on a 3 2 1 basis. The player coming up with. Uh, the uh, most number of points at the end of the Australian of the English part of the tour will have five thousand dollars worth of national Panasonic products. Marvellous stuff and uh, a great prize. All right, England of uh, the I can get this England side right. <laughs> I wish England were doing it as well in the uh, in the uh, international competition. But this witness side have come up with another scrum win. I think that was against the feed, was it? Uh, no. And there's another penalty and a walk for descent, 10 yards. So the penalty count really getting to be a bit of a horror now. It comes up to 15 to 8. Almost approaching the older stupidity where at one side they were 11 2 down in the penalty. They like the kick for touch up to the halfway line. Now they come across field. Matt McKenzie away there to O'Neill. Close to the right. Throws a punch at the Australian player, marking him up. Mackenzie runs from dummy half, runs into trouble. Stephen Folk stood his ground and belted him down. Hume. There was a forward pass there, no question about it. The referee was right onto it and needed to be because it was about a metre or half a metre forward. No question about it. Paul Ayers was the player that came on the burst. The pass that was delivered to him was... Uh, uh, very much of the uh, gridiron variety. Alexander to feed the scrum on halfway. And that English hooker, uh, the uh, little hooker there, uh, Phil McKenzie, appears to be uh, loose arm. Oh, here we go, another differential penalty to witness. And that hooker, uh, the witness hooker there, had a loose arm in that set scrum and had both knees on the ground. Just astonishing. Benny Elias as the captain has uh, been told to uh, get away and not question. Very 
Dowd has driven the ball up into a good attacking position for a witness side, and here they go. Mackenzie. Mike O'Neill, he's up and down pretty smartly too. Still outside this Australian quarter. Mackenzie. Here. Pinner. Pinner gets a pass away nicely to uh, Richie Ayres, who likes to run off the edge of the ruck. Second rower. Now Pinner weaves and runs into trouble in the middle of the ruck. There's Davidson there, the tackler. Over to him. He's gone for the grubber kick through. This will be to Kenny. Kenny evades one tackle. Can't evade the second. They belt him down using the term literally on the quarter line. He gets to his feet and throws a punch. Oh, there's he. Uh... Now, I don't really, this is ridiculous. The player who's carrying the football is the one entitled to protection. Who's entitled to the protection from the referee. Let's have a look at it again. We're seeing a replay of this incident. Now, there's Kenny caught by one leg. He's confronted by Moran and half held. He gets around him. In comes another defender. They finally put him to the ground. He wants to get to his feet and play the football. There are three of them festooned over him at the moment. And Brent Kenny has gone to the send bin for 10 minutes uh, in what to me is a horrifying decision. Fairly typical of the some sort of the refereeing we're receiving in this, uh, in this country. Well, Kenny will be off for 10 minutes. Now we'll see whether this witness side can get themselves into an attacking position here. They're in, uh, in pretty good shape at the moment. They're only about 15 metres out from the Australian line. And from the ruck, they're trying to work the blind side of the move fell down because Mackenzie couldn't have a... There wasn't a ball runner there, the dummy half. He had to take the tackle. David Hume working it to Pinner. And now we've got a penalty awarded against the uh, Australian side, which takes it up to a fairly handy lead in the penalties, 18 to 8, offside in the ruck on that occasion. This one directly in front. And uh, I can't believe some of the refereeing we've seen on this tour. The referees appear to be watching one team only. And this witness side don't need any help from a referee. They've performed adequately and eminently satisfactorily tonight. Anyway, getting back to the business at hand. Mick Burke, the fullback, comes up. He's directly in front, 15 metres out, and it is a goal. So the scoreline now into the second half is Australia 8, witness 4. Australia playing a man short at the moment. Kenny from the field. Terry Lamb restarts, drives it deep. Myler takes it beautifully. A real uh, basketball catch that above the head. He's come away with a kick through, trying to get to the play. What will the referee rule on there? No decision there. The Australian players come up with the ball on the quarter. Hume's the tackler. They've got a guard possession here while they're a man short. It's Benny Elias was the man. Now Siren running hard and straight through the ruck, pounds his way up but very concerned, concerned with making ground and not concerned with trying to get those arms released. There's a penalty for stealing the ball from the tackle player. So this penalty two metres outside the Australian quarter and about 15 metres in, perhaps 18 metres in from the sideline. 18 to 9, the penalty count. And a kick and goal will be taken by Terry Lamb. He's been successful with... Uh, I think, uh, has he had four kicks a goal? Is, is, I've forgotten the statistic there. He's had three kicks a goal for two successes, so this is his fourth coming up. Now, I'm looking at the flags on top of the uh, club room over there. They're just fluttering very lightly. And what there is, apparently, is favouring him. Terry Lamb from uh, three metres outside the quarter. Around about 20 metres in from the sideline. Taking a lot of time over the kick. It's a critical one. Strikes it. It has hit the upright and rebounded into the field of play. So they're one all and they hit the rebound. Hit and rebound. Away comes Ayers with a rebound. Bring it up towards the quarter. Recollecting that Australia are a man short at the moment. 
There's the winger, John Besson, moving himself midfield, trying to get himself some room to move. And he's been one of the players that uh, Maurice Bamford, the England coach, allegedly has come here tonight to have a look at. There's Burke, the uh, fullback, coming through. Lamb has been the tackler. They pick him up and drive him back. He's about five metres outside his quarter. Surinan was a little bit tardy getting away from him on that occasion. Steve O'Neill running crossfield, makes himself easy meet for the defence there. That was Benny Elias. Myler. Quick hands along there. Out they go. But again, the defence out wide is very adequate. Last tackle coming up. The, I noticed Mal Meninga and the other winger of Shearer have both dropped back. There's a kick through being put. It'll go to Shearer. He makes a good run, gets a pass away to Belcher. Belcher's gone well. And it's a nice tackle there, too, from John Bastard. Coming right across field to bring it up. Now Dale Shearer injecting himself up the blind side, up the opposite wing, shall we say. Coming from the right wing to work on the left. Now Surin charging straight ahead. Goes over the top of uh, Darren Wright. Elias. Alexander. Davidson right through there. Can't get his arms free to get the pass away. About 18 metres out now from the witness line. Eight to four, the score in Australia's favour. Elias. Alexander. Lamb, Meninga, awful pass, half volleyed nicely by Shearer. We're back on the inside to Meninga. He's tackled about 15 metres out. Elias, Alexander, dummies, words, caught in the fence. And that's a turnover. Brett Kenny still in that uh, sin bin. Alan Clarkson will acquaint us of the uh, fact of uh, his re-emergence in uh, perhaps six or so minutes time witness in possession just outside the quarter only the one try in the match there's a pass being delivered out to uh, they're on the right at the blind side of the lap comes which he is terry lamb has put out a play we might have to see that we might have to see that again there's a trainer on at the moment the uh, no touch judge on there though at this stage it was David Hume who was uh, put down I only caught it out of the corner of my eye there's another uh, witness player lying prostate on the ground at the moment Myra gets a pass away it's on out to Hume Hume up the field gets a nice one away to Moran Moran goes ahead the ball has been kicked uh, he tried to centre kick that I think and kick ahead but the ball went over the uh, the sideline and a ricochet off an Australian player and uh, Graham Hughes, who's that player down there for a witness? The witness man down is Harry Pinner, uh, and the man that uh, ensured that he was down and stayed down for the count was the man that put Hume down, uh, Terry Lamb, lucky to escape on two occasions. All right, back they come now, working a crisscross move out there in the centre. Barry Dowd finally tackled. The Pinner's back at his feet and uh, prancing back to the play. He's been a pretty useful player for them today. Oh, an awful bit of play there by O'Neill. Lost the ball and went straight to an Australian player. Just dropped it on the way through the run. They're back in their quarter. Let's see what the tactics are. Lamb comes straight and uh, trying to use that power of his. Martin Bella running on the blind side of the ruck. He's created plenty of uh, acreage for the Australian team. Lang Mac takes his turn and going through the ruck. They're not having any trouble getting beyond the advantage line, but the passing at times has been very very uh, erratic once uh, little half gaps have been created Lang Mac uh, down on the ground at the moment receiving attention I don't know that there was anything untoward in it just getting a bit of treatment we'll see it again here he runs from dummy half and you see if you can see something that's gone wrong with that one uh, well He's uh, not uh, been injured by a stiff arm or a punch. There's no doubt about that. His head may have hit the ground. Anyway, Langmax uh, to his feet. The trainer has been on. Cleaned him up a bit. The magic water, the magic sponge. He's OK. Tells the referee, Mr Berry, that he's OK. Elias, there's a kick downfield by Lamb. It's going to go to Burke or over his head anyway. He now feels it, the fullback. Alexander comes across and picks him off with a very good tackle before he can get outside the quarter. 
And uh, John Bastant running from dummy half, but not able to make any progress down the field. McKenzie. Oh, and strong defence from Surinan up over the top there. Stephen Folks down below. They're tackling in twos. Surinan half step there by Pinner. Pinner looks to me. All right, Pinner looks to me like a player who uh, has played in the backs at stages in his career because he's very useful on his feet. Graham, here's a change of tactics by the Australian side. You blocked. This uh, wind has really started to pick up, Rex. The Australians picked it up pretty quickly themselves. You saw them chip over the top. I think they're going to do a hell of a lot of kicking and just pick up on some mistakes from this, just like this, uh, with this wind aside. That's their feed now. I think you should be seeing Terry Lamb feed the scrums. That was the mail from Don Ferner to try and settle this uh, referee down because Alexander was certainly having penalty, uh, plenty of problems, although he's going to feed this scrum. Uh, in, in actual fact, Lamb. they are going to uh, turn it over. And Lamb gives no. it back to him. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but uh, a great chance for Australia now because that kicking game has brought them up with a, a mistake on this witness side. Well, of course, they're a man short in the scrum, but there it is, in and out. It's been given to Belcher up the blind side. He's got plenty of pace. Runs beautifully. He's going to go close. And if they drag him over the sideline there, it should be a penalty. He gets to his feet and plays it now out to Lamb. On to Les Davidson. He's on the charge straight for the line. They picked up an effective defence there by witness about three metres out. They stop him and put him down. Eight to four, Australia lead. Slow play the balls. Uh, Self-defeating. Out there to Bellary. Works a run around with Elias. Elias can't get the pass away. Very effective smothering tackle coming in there from uh, the hooker, McKenzie. Bella pumping it up again through the ruck and uh, making good ground. They're taking a hell of a long while to get off him. Gee whiz. Little quick hands should be a try at the corner, is it? That is to Chris Mortimer. The referee judges on that one. That was just straight out quick passing and they ran out of defenders. Witness out wide. We'll see it again on the replay. You'll see that uh, Stephen Folks had a, a pretty strong part in that try by holding a pass up here. And here he goes, he holds it up, pulls a player to him, sucks it out, gives the pass away. It went nicely out there to Langmack. Langmack got it on the Mortimer. So it was virtually a canterbury Bankstown try. Just quick hands up the blind side with uh, Folks having the capability to uh, suck the defence right into him. So that moves it along. Australia 12, witness 4. A tough game they've had, uh, Graham Hughes. A good performance by Witness. It has been a strong performance by uh, Witness. I'd like to see this uh, Australian pack of forwards, though, Rex, support each other a lot more with the ball. They tend to run one out. They've, they've been le letting each other be posted. And a guy like Paul Surin, I'd like to see him used a lot uh, more better on the blind side of play. They, he tends to be running very close to the ruck back home. He was running down the blind or even two and three out. That's where Wayne Pearce caused a hell of a lot of trouble here in England in 82. He should be off the 5'8". OK, now Mel Meninga's taking the kick at goal from out wide. He struck it hard. He struck it uh, wide, though. It's gone to the left of the post, so the score remains as it was. Australia 12, witness 4. All right, well, that's uh, good news for Australia. Brett Kenny has rejoined the field. He was off for 10 minutes for a vicious assault he made on three witness defenders. There's a knock on over there too, which won't have pleased the coach. I think it was Paul Langmack, the player that put it down. It came to him low and hard. He probably had time to stop it with his foot, but uh, tried to pick it up. The scrum going down, well, about 18 metres out from the Australian line. It's in and out the witness side. Myler works a double around move there. And uh, it looked promising for a moment, but the defence very quickly up. Terry Lamb was the man moving it out on the blind side of the ruck. They've got. Uh, Number 11 there, Richie Ayres going strong. He likes to run this one. Now McKenzie pumps it out on the open side to Pinner. Pinner weaving and dodging. Good stepper. McKenzie comes into assist. Played with the Illawarra Steelers, this young number nine. And came from Picton. Out they pump it out to Burke, and he's wrapped up in a ball and all tackle by that gorilla Mal Meninga, who's a huge man. Meninga seems to be holding his hand as if uh, he's got some sort of injury. His left hand seems to be giving him a bit of trouble. Witness now up with a few metres of the Australian line. Out tomorrow. Moran and the winger comes back infield. Weaves gets a long pass away. It's gone across field there. Moving it out to Pinner. Pinner gets it away to Ayers. Ayers on to Myler. Myler runs into a power of trouble and loses the ball and a tackle. 
He was hit very, very hard from uh, straight on, and Surinan was the man that dispossessed him of the ball. Yes, that's right. A miler, and uh, he wouldn't have appreciated that from a uh, <laughs> from a former teammate. Benny Elias making a little bust up the middle there. He's not done that since about the 20th minute of the uh, first half. Uh, Langmax away to Surin. Surin comes under a, a tackle that looked uh, well. The referee signified chest height. No argument. He's uh, okay. He's to his feet. Back to Benny Elias. Back goes the pass to Meninga. Meninga again getting it down, way downfield. Nicely taken out there by John Bassett. He tries to come back upfield. He's picked off 10 metres uh, from the uh, halfway line. And what's the ruling there? Well, it looks like he's uh, dropped the ball and the uh, tackle. And that is the reason for the... Uh, the reason I asked, because Benny Elias looked very startled. The referee blew his whistle, and I think he thought his team had conceded a penalty. God knows they've conceded enough, 18 to 9. Scrum going in. Lamb feeds it, and his first feed is a incorrect feed. Langmax got the ball. He should give it straight back. There's no reason for him to get involved in that fracker. That was a straight-out crooked feed, according to Mr. Berry. 12 points to four, Australia. Graham, you've got the news on the viewers' competition in our National Panasonic, haven't you? Well, while the players continue to argue, yes, I have. Uh, the, all the viewers, of course, or the correct viewer on this occasion can win themselves a complete home entertainment centre from National Panasonic. All you have to do is pick who, we, who you think will name our National Panasonic player of the series, put his name along with your own name and address on the back of an envelope and post it to PO Box 222 North Ride 2113. All those entries having to be in by the 21st, close of mail, 21st of November, and we'll be drawing the, uh, the winner out on the 23rd of November, the third and last telecast cast the third test here from England David Fordham doing the duty for us okay Stephen O'Neill is the man in possession for the witness side about uh, 16 meters out from their line Pinner tries to work a switch of play does to Myler Myler gets it to Burke Burke's got the pass away out there to number four Barry Dowd and he's uh, put down there by strong defense there was swarming defense Belcher was there and uh, so was Stephen folks uh, the wing three-quarter uh, John Bastard tries to go from dummy half. That's the Australian goal line. He's only a couple of feet away from it. Mackenzie, an awful pass out to Myler. Myler's going to go for the grubber kick through. That is going to go straight there to uh, Meninga. Meninga fires it out nicely to Brett Kenny. Kenny shows uh, uh, a clean pair of heels for a few yards. He's pushed away by Moran. Now Meninga. Strong play from Chris Mortimer taking it out beyond the uh, Australian quarter line. Now Langback taking it up off the edge of the ruck. He's trying to run a bit of a bunch at the moment. They've got uh, all their players on one side of the field on the uh, blind side. Lamb's got the kick. And he's going to find uh, a good distance of ground down here. A bit of, bit of open acreage. The ball's going to be picked up by Moran. He's got Burke in support. He's going to run into trouble. And straight away, it's Shearer there to put him down. Five metres outside the quarter. 12 points to four, Australia there. This witness side, not disgraced in any way. A couple of players, Australian players, fell base over apex then. Mackenzie swivels away with a nice dummy half pass. Had it on to Air, Richie Air, and uh, now uh, Hume and uh, an Australian player having a, an altercation on the ground. It needs uh, a little bit of attention from the referee. Lang Mack, who's had uh, trouble with uh, Hume on a couple of occasions in this uh, match so far. No reason for any of this sort of stuff at this uh, late stage. Yes, uh, it's a guessing game. There's a competition on. Who gets the penalty? You guessed. The witness side. You, Vivi. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't help it. That's the new, that's the new uh, catch cry of the Channel 10 crew over here who are wild sort of devils, but dead on the level. <laughs> What a great bunch they've turned out to be. They don't like a drink in either, either. OK, let's go across now with this witness side. Uh, having some uh, strong play out in the middle of the ruck there with Mike O'Neill popping a little bit of a, a lacing in the tackle from Les Davidson. And out they pump it out wide. It's uh, that Ayers who's had as good a game as any player on the witness side. He's a very strong runner out wide. Likes to run. Myler throws the dummy. Oh, and he's almost cut in half with a great tackle right around the, the middle of the stomach there from Surinam. Mackenzie running from dummy half, he's caught, gets a pass away, ricocheted off an Australian player. Should have been six to go, the referee must have missed that. 
on the halfway line. He's lost the ball now. He lost it without assistance from an Australian. <laughs> and he's pulled back by one of his own players, number eight there, Steve O'Neill, who grabbed hold of him and pulled him back in a violent fashion. And the penalty's been awarded to Australia for dissent, I think. <laughs> well, I don't know how uh, I don't know how an Australian player would go if he was manhandled by one of his own teammates like that. <laughs> I think you'd see some sort of execution before. Mel Meninga having a good long look at this kick. It's a 42 metre dimension. It's in the middle of the field. Graham here's the breeze. Is it supporting him? The flags seem a bit wishy-washy to me. Oh, there's a strong breeze behind Meninga for this kick. He, he, he should be able to put this one dead, the man of his size. It's, uh, as I said, it blew up about 10, 15 minutes ago, and that's why the tactics were for Australia really now starting to concentrate on a kicking game. Right on. OK. Well, he's uh, eight metres inside the half. He's almost in the middle of the field, only probably five or six metres off. Graham has advised us that the breeze, as it is, is uh, effectively helping his kick. One, two, three, strikes it. Oh, my heavens, he's got the distance, all right. No question about that. It's a beautiful goal. And went straight into the crowd. That's a splendid kick there from that range. 14 to 4, Australia have run away to what they would think was a slightly more comfortable lead. Man of the match for both sides. For Australia, for Australia, Benny Elias has picked it up. And for witness, Tony Milan. Fair enough. Benny's done very well. But anyway, he's tackled on the halfway, the little bloke at the moment. And uh, he's to his feet. Long passing coming out there to Martin Bella. Bella, at the moment he can start to uh, arrive at a, uh, a ball movement side to his game, he's going to be a very effective forward. The kick has been put down. It's fielded by Burke. Burke uh, got a fortuitous bounce there. He's been picked up and slammed to the ground just outside the quarter. McKenzie, uh, Hume rather, at dummy half. It's an honour, McKenzie. Got a pass away there to Milo, who runs into a swarm of trouble there. Midfield, just outside his quarter. Hume. Pinner. Pinner backslammed hard just outside the quarter. He's trying to have done it fairly hard on this match. Not ably assisted by a 21 to 10 penalty count against them. Which has rather knocked some of these young players backwards a bit. Well, there's Milo. He's going to try to get into the clear. He's done that, but he's kicked as he did in the test match. He could have had support there, and the ball has now come to Australia with Kenny running across field, looking for support. Throws a dummy, goes under a head high, threw an awful pass at the end of it. It has been retained by Australia, but that pass was a non-event. And that's where they've let themselves down. Benny Elias kicking for touch. He's going to find touch, is he, or is it going to roll straight down the field? It'll probably go into the end goal and have to be brought out again by uh, Burke. And now he's driven hard into the end goal. No, it's not Burke, it's the uh, wing three-quarter Bastnett who got there pretty smartly. And uh, Australia now right back in a strong attacking position, but what they need is the ball. How can they get that? From strong defence, there's the ball being lost, but lost backwards. And they make uh, about a 15-metre gain in that ruck, the witness side. And they come away again on the open side. Look at the strength of that defence coming in there. Beautiful tackle by Siren and drove him sideways. David Hume out to Myla. Myla gets a pass away. It's gone out to right. Right can't get the pass away because of the splendid defence that came in from uh, Brett Kenny and uh, Les Davidson. Mackenzie drives that ball downfield and over the sideline. So that is the answer for Australia to uh, get a little bit of possession back here. We've got a player down seeking attention at the moment uh, I think it's Stephen Folks. and we've got a replacement coming on Phil okay Graham you tell me Phil Daly the man out in the sideline there the man to come off uh, Martin Bella Martin Bella really okay well we shall see about that he's uh, still standing on the sideline is uh, our man out there to Mortimer on a Sheila Shira. He takes part within 10 metres of the witness quarter. Well, folks has come from the field, and here we go out to Belcher now. Far from being transferred, Kenny gets a pass away nicely. It's gone to uh, Alex uh, to Belcher again, who was twice in that move. Alexander's at dummy half. Out to Benny Elias, not at Bella. 
Looks for support. Can't get his arms free enough to do it. Takes it up to the quarter line. Elias. Alexander, little kick through. It'll be picked off by Myler and taken into the end goal where he tries to run it out. He's not going to do that. He's picked off. It'll be a line drop out to restart play. 14 points to four, Australia lead. And there they come with a drop. It's not gone very far, but Kenny's going to get underneath this on the first bounce and uh, try to bring it back. He brings it back to the quarter line. Now, it's a good opportunity for Australia. Got five tackles to go, 20 metres out. Dale Shearer looking for a uh, ball. Gets a pass away to Benny Elias. Elias shows the dummy. Attempted to uh, fool the defence with a dummy kick. They didn't fall for it. In the last five minutes, I'm reliably informed. Bella pumping it up again. Goes through one defender. Two, still going. Good surging run. He gets very close to scoring a try. He has scored. That is a powerhouse bit of work by Martin Bella, who's really pounded his way through the rucks tonight. Let me tell you, a very strong display. So that takes it away to a comfortable now 18 to 4 cushion. 14 point cushion for the Australian side. Relatively simple kick and goal to follow. And now comes. Uh, and now comes uh, Phil Daly onto the field. And here's a replay of that. You can see the extent of the break he made through some what turned out to be fairly parlous defence. Too many players attempting to go high. OK, the news on Stephen Folkes from Graham Hughes. More problems for the Australian doctor, I'm afraid. Uh, Rex Folkes, the man, left the field so quickly that to uh, force that change, Bella was the one that was going to come off, rather ironically. Uh, a possible cheekbone fracture for Folkes. Yes, I saw him rubbing his right cheekbone rather tentatively there, but uh, only time will tell. They can be badly bruised. Badly bruised and uh, painful. And they get with the attempted kick. Has raised the flags. Away it goes to 20 points to four. It's uh, rather sad in a way that uh, the score is getting a little bit away from witness now because they have performed pretty, pretty well which is way below the usual average. And that's young Daly catching the ball from the kickoff there. Now it's away to Dale Shearer. His manly running a teammate. Running across field. Time ticking away here at uh, Norton Park. Witness. Daly coming through the middle of the ruck there, getting uh, not uh, too much in the way of distance out of that run. Meninga goes for the long pumping kick downfield. It's going to go over the sideline. A great uh, line kick. Uh, it uh, evaded John Bastard totally there. He had no option to get to it. Meninga coming up with a gain of in the order of 60 metres. From the point at which he kicks it to the point at which it rolled over the sideline. Now, can Australia win one against the feed? That would be a little bit too much to ask, I would think. There it is, it's in and out the witness side, but we've come up with a penalty, which is as good as. So that will be a uh, penalty against the uh, halfback, David Hume, for failure to retire. The ball came out the side of the scrum and he fell on it. Now Terry Lamb kicking for touch. Now they've got a number of moves. They operate on these taps close to the line. <coughs> and they can take place on the first, second, third or fourth tackle. There's nothing exotic about that. Lamb straight out to Meninga. Meninga looks for support, throws a pass, it's intercepted. It was an awful pass. It was always going to be uh, an easy pass to intercept, so they've lost the ball on the second tackle. And Wright's the man that came up with it. On the blind side comes uh, Stephen O'Neill, a Doherty performer for the witness side tonight. And Daly. Uh, Monstering one of the witness forwards there. <laughs> I think, I think it was Mike O'Neill. There's Mackenzie running, gets a pass back on the inside. Mike O'Neill. Richie Ayres, a long floating pass gone out there to Barry Dowd. He's picked off with a fine tackle. I think it was the man. Pass gone astray. But uh, fortuitously picked up on the half volley. Ten metres outside their quarter. Last tackle coming up. 
Now, what's Pinner going to do? He's going to kick for touch. It's rebounded off an Australian player. Straight back to a witness man to Wright, who loses it in the tackle. That's the end of the section. Australia have come up. No, it's not the end of the section. Now the kids are on the field. That play will have to stop. Belcher's running. He should just run over the sideline, I think. And there's 150, 250 kids on the field here at the moment. It would be eminently dangerous were it to continue. So... It is just uh, it's too dangerous for words what uh, could have happened in the last few minutes of that game. Shades of uh, some of the scenes we used to see on Sydney football grounds. So, 20 points to four. The win to the Australian side. The penalty count was a horrendous 21 to 11 in favour of the witness side. The scrums went 8 to 2 in favour of witness with one scrum feed uh, against uh, the Australian side. The try scorers for the Australian team, and they were three, were Alexander, Mortimer, Bella. The goals for Australia were Lamb 2, Meninga 2. For the uh, witness side, Burke came up with their four points through two penalty goals. That's been the action down here. I'll be back with our award winner and a few more details right after this break. Can't be far off the hooter. Down they go. Could be the last scrum. Oh, and that's the Australians' ball. Price going on the short side, gets his ball away, but there's good tackling on the far side. Holds Australia just short. They'll come charging in from this one. There it is, and he can't quite make it. But they do come with some force when they come. That's a good ball, it's on the floor. Oh, and how lucky can you get? That bounced beautifully for him. And there goes the halter, and how unfortunate for Bradford. Final score then, 13 points to six. And the kick thing, Rogers not even bothering with the kick at goal. 13 6 the score, but what a magnificent stint of. Uh... Well, I think the lads are, you can be, we can be proud of the lads, Alan. They tackle their hearts out today and just prove that they can, you know, yeah. these lads can be, be tackled out. Now, if Northern can do it, we should have people capable in a uh, test team of doing they're it. They're certainly fit enough to uh, hold them. That's but right. I think what we're lacking is it's... this generation of power. That's right. But surely, we, you know, when, you, when we, we pick from the top clubs, you yeah, should have one or, one or two people with this kind of power. Well, that's a or the footballing skills. That's right, and that's a tremendous performance, Alan. Oh, fantastic. By anybody's standards. I think against, the lads can be uh, proud, and I'm sure Peter will be proud of the lads. Yeah. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they'll be upset at not beating them, actually, but yeah. certainly be proud of the way the lads tackled. And a tremendous crowd as well. It's oh, been it's packed been up great. the far side. Super. There we are, then. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are at Craven Park for the first...